do you think will make contact with alien within the, the next 50 years? Well, that's a really tough one to say. Um, I mean, if there are super intelligent aliens out there, they're probably already observing us. That would seem quite likely. And we just um, are not smart enough to realize it. Um, but I can do some, some back of the envelope calculations and um, any advanced alien civilization that, that was at all interested in populating the galaxy, um, even without, uh, without exceeding the speed of light, even if you're only moving at, say, 10 or 20 percent of the speed of light, um, you could uh, populate the entire galaxy in, let's say, 10 million years, maybe 20 million years max. This is nothing, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Once you said you want to die on Mars, why? I, I don't, to be clear, I don't want to die on Mars. <laughs> um, it, it's like, if, I mean, we're all going to die someday. And if you're going to pick some place to die, then why not Mars? Okay. You know, if, if we're born on Earth, why not die on Mars? Seems like maybe it'd be, be, be kind of exciting. But uh, so I, I, I think given the choice of dying on Earth or dying on Mars, I'd say, yeah, sure, I'll die on Mars. Um, but it's not some kind of Mars death wish. Um, <laughs> and, and, and if I do die on Mars, I just don't want it to be on impact. Okay. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Let's come back to Earth, actually. Okay. Uh, you tweeted that you are building a tunnel under Washington, D.C. Why? What is it? Well, it's a secret plot, okay. um, <laughs> just between us. Okay. Um, Nobody have you? Yeah, exactly. Please keep that <laughs> secret. Um, the, well, I think th this is going to sound a little, uh, I mean, it's, it seems like somewhat uh, trivial or, or silly, but I've been saying this for many years now, but I think that the, the solution to urban congestion is a network of, of tunnels under cities. And you can, I'm, when I say, I don't mean a, a 2D plane of tunnels, I mean tunnels that go many levels deep. Um, so you can always go uh, deeper than you, you can go up. Like the, the deepest mines are taller than the tallest buildings. Um, so you could have tunnels, uh, a network of tunnels that is 20, 30, 40, 50 levels, if, as many levels as you want, really. Um, and so given that, you can overcome the congestion situation in, in any city in the world. Uh, the challenge is just figuring out how do you build tunnels um, quickly and at low cost and with high safety. Um, so if tunneling technology can be improved to the point where you can build tunnels fast, cheap, and safe, then that would completely get rid of uh, any traffic situations in cities. Um, and so I think that's why I think it's an important technology. Uh, and uh, Washington, DC, Washington DC, LA, and most of the major American cities, most major cities in the world, suffer from severe traffic issues. And it's mostly because you've got these buildings, which are you have tall buildings that are 3D, and you have a road network that is uh, one level. Um, and then people generally want to go in and out of those buildings at the exact same time. So then you get the traffic jam. Let's come back to UAE and Dubai. The first time I met you, it was 4th of June, 2015 at your office in SpaceX. And I ask you, would you have a presence in UAE? And your answer was, I'm busy with China. Maybe not in the near future. Yeah. And almost a year and a half later, we are here. Same time goes quite fast. Yeah. Why now? Um, well, I think actually things are going reasonably well in China. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, we had some initial challenges figuring out charging and imp service infrastructure and various other things, but now it's actually going fairly well. And um, uh, so the timing seemed to be good to 
uh, really make uh, a significant uh, debut in this region starting in uh, Dubai. Okay. Uh, in your opinion, what is the new disturbing thing that will come in technology next? What's next in technology? What's next in technology? <sighs> that will disturb the way we live, the way we think, the way we do business? Well, the, 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 the most near-term uh, impact from a technological standpoint is autonomous cars, like fully self-driving cars. Um, like I said, that's going to be, that's going to happen much faster than people realize. Um, so, and, and that, the, it's going to be a great convenience to be an autonomous car, but there are many people whose jobs it is to drive. So if, if um, uh, in fact, I think it might be the single largest employer uh, of people is dri driving uh, in various forms. And so then we need to figure out new roles for, for what, what, you know, what do those people do? Um, but, it, but it will be very disruptive and very quick. Now, and I should characterize what I mean by, by, by quick. Um, because the, there are, uh, quick means different things to different people. There are over two billion vehicles in the world, approaching, in fact, approaching two and a half billion uh, cars and trucks in, in the world. Uh, the total new vehicle production capacity is about 100 million, um, which, which makes sense because the life of a car or truck before it's finally scrapped is about 20, 25 years. So, um, so the point at which we see full autonomy appear will not be the point at which there is massive societal upheaval because it will take a long time to make enough autonomous vehicles to uh, be to disrupt um, employment. So that that disruption I'm talking about will take place over about 20 years. But still, 20 years is a short period of time to have. I think something like 12 to 15 percent of the workforce be unemployed. Thank you. Uh, this is the largest global government summit. We have over 139 government here. If you want to advise government official to be ready for the future, what is three thing or three advice you'll give them? Well, I think. The, the first bit of advice would be to really pay, pay close attention to the development of artificial intelligence. Um, I think this is, we need to just be very careful in uh, how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that uh, researchers don't get carried away. Because uh, sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work, they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Um, so I think it's important for public safety that we, you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a, a danger to the public. Um, let's see. Secondly, I would say um, we, we, we do need to think about transport in general. Um, and uh, there's, there's the movement towards uh, electric vehicles, um, sustainable transport. Um, that, I think that's going to be you know, good for, for, for many reasons, but again, not something that happens immediately. That'll happen slower than the uh, self-driving vehicles. So that's probably something that happens over 30 or 40 years, the transition to electric vehicles. Um, so thinking about that in, in context, um, the demand for electricity will increase dramatically. Um, so currently, in terms of total energy usage in the world, it's about one-third electricity, about one-third transport, about one-third heating. Um, so at, over time, that will transition to almost all, not, not all, but predominantly electricity, which means that the demand for electricity will probably triple. Um, so it's going to be very important to think about how do you make so much more electricity. Um, 
and um, seem they have an easy job. That's that's it. There is more, no more challenges for them. Um, no, well, then I, I think maybe the, the these these things do play into each other a little bit. But what to do about mass unemployment? This is going to be a massive social yes. challenge. Um, and I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. Universal basic Un income. Universal basic income. I think it's going to be necessary. So it means that unemployed people will be paid across the globe. Yeah. Because there is no job. Machine, robot is taking over. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. Okay. Um, that, that's simply the, the... And I want to be clear that these... These are not uh, things that I think that I wish would happen. These are think, simply things that I think probably will happen. Um.